and David Bernard from the Center for Human Reproduction. Uh, he will be speaking about uh, does ICSI really increase autism risks? Studies. Um, it, it, when you're looking at a, a, a condition that has a relatively um, low uh, incidence, um, and then you start asking the question, uh, did um, such and such, is that related to, to, to this other factor? Um, there's this whole uh, issue of discovery bias that I think enters into all of these uh, issues and, and creates these spurious um, associations. And so with a rare condition um, like autism um, uh, that uh, has been uh, really endemic, um, there were, uh, we'll, we'll, I'll show you, uh, I'll show you. So, so the question came up, does um, uh, assisted reproduction and ICSI in particular um, increase the uh, risk of autism? And uh, it's something we have to look at pretty critically. Now, autism is a terrible, uh, terrible condition. I'll, I'll tell you, my nephew uh, is 21 years old and is in an assisted living home. He's been autistic all his life. So I have some personal uh, experience with this. Uh, severely impaired um, social interaction, uh, verbal and nonverbal uh, communication skills are lacking, um, restricted and repetitive uh, behavior. Uh, my, my nephew has this thing where he occasionally starts beating himself on the head. Um, you know, it's, it's just a terrible thing. And he's a, he's a nice boy, but he, he can't talk. Um, so it, it's a terrible condition. Um, the diagnostic criteria require that symptoms appear before age three. Um, but um, with increasing awareness and, and, and other factors, um, uh, it's hard to pin uh, how many kids uh, really have this condition. There are some things we know, um, something like 22 million people with autism uh, as of 2013, uh, one to two uh, per thousand worldwide. And it, it appears to be more common in boys than in girls. So I don't know if you've had the experience, but we've had the experience of people with a previous autistic child and then come in and they want to have gender selection to try to uh, avoid um, uh, or decrease the risk of future autism. Well, um, changes in practice um, and, and government um, have, uh, um, and, and financial incentives uh, for a, a diagnosis. Um, in New York, um, I'm aware that there are mandates for children who have um, um, educational disabilities, uh, and there are um, lawyers uh, who uh, represent uh, those kids to try to get their money for educational mandates, and and so that all these factors probably to some degree um, drive up the discovery of autism. So it's hard to pin um, what the actual um, prevalence of autism is these days, depending on what um, what historical. A criteria you're using uh, to define it, but some would say it's as high as almost uh, one in one in seventy these days. So uh, where does it come from? The bottom line, uh, we don't know. We suspect it's a combination of genetic and environmental factors, um, but certainly uh, there have been many, 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 many uh, factors that have been suggested um, to be related to autism, including. Um, all those listed here, I mentioned before, uh, vaccination, um, which has been basically um, uh, discredited as a cause. And in fact, there's very little um, evidence for any of these um, uh, issues. I apologize that the, um, the, the letters didn't scan properly in this cartoon. Um, the one that was uh, supported with some good data was that perhaps um, air pollution and exposure to heavy metals and particulates may increase um, autism to some extent. Um, so there is uh, some data. Uh, in terms of genetic factors, um, there are um, uh, some rare mutations which uh, have uh, major effects that you can put on the autism spectrum. 
um, some multi-gene interactions, which makes more, more sense to us, um, that are associated with autism. And, and it's those interactions and, and actually a complex genetic pattern. So it's hard to relate any particular um, gene or, or, or uh, to autism. We have patients who've come in to us and said, um, you know, can we do uh, pre-implantation uh, genetic testing to rule out autism? And of course, you cannot. Um, now, uh, of course, Fragile X is a little bit on that spectrum, and we, we do test for that. But uh, true autism, no. <coughs> so um, what about uh, the evidence for autism and uh, other mental retardation among offspring born after IVF? Um, this is a, a population-based prospective cohort study um, done in Sweden um, using national health registries. Um, and uh, where's my pointer? Okay. All right. So remember, this is not ICSI yet. This is all of art. Um, and uh, these are a um, uh, number of cases in uh, IVF patients, and these are in spontaneous pregnancies. Um, and uh, you can see that these uh, relative risks um, uh, mostly are crossing uh, one, um, uh, but um, that uh, this, this one is possibly the crude, uh, unadjusted uh, risk appears to be significant. So there's a trend. Um, but you can see uh, from this, even though none of these things are terribly significant, that uh, for the uh, singletons, it appears uh, to be a little bit less um, common than for the multiple. So there does appear to be, uh, and this is borne out by other studies, some association of um, autism uh, with higher levels of multiple pregnancies, which I guess could be associated um, in, uh, uh, with IVF uh, sorts of issues. So um, uh, Dr. Kushner um, has made us aware um, that um, the uh, CDC, which has been, um, has been um, given the responsibility of chronicling um, our, and, and monitoring our art success here uh, in the United States, uh, given that responsibility by law, has uh, kind of gone a little bit beyond their mandate and began looking at that data and, and analyzing it. And um, so this comes also, again, from Dimitri Kissin's group. And um, they looked at uh, the association of uh, art um, with um, infertility, with uh, autism uh, in our conceived children. They looked at a variety of, uh, of factors. Now, they uh, limited this study to a uh, caseload in California between 1997 and 2011, with about 42,000 um, um, cases that were reviewed. And what they did is they um, looked retrospectively, um, uh, looking at uh, their, their um, they call the at the CDC, the National um, Art Data, called NAS. Um, and um, they looked at data from 1996 to 2006, just for the state of California. And they linked that to birth certificate data over the same time and to uh, California Registry uh, for Autism. So that's how they assembled uh, the data. And uh, in fact, after they did that, they did find an increased uh, relative risk um, of um, children um, with autism who had been, um, uh, who were in those cases where there was male factor um, and uh, where had they'd been exposed to ICSI during treatment. Uh, some other interesting things that they noted, uh, which uh, just confirmed previous, um, is that children with autism were more likely to be male, um, uh, to be twins or triplets or higher order multiples, as we mentioned before, more likely to be born preterm, probably associated with the multiple pregnancies, and low birth rate, also probably associated with multiple pregnancies. Parents of autistic children were older, um, and uh, mothers of autistic children were more likely to have been nulliparous, um, to undergo cesarean delivery and um, had less tubal factor, unexplained infertility, and the couples had more um, male factor. Well, um, what they uh, noted is that um, 
that um, over the years that they were studying it from 1996 to uh, 2006, there actually had been a marked increase in uh, ICSI use um, in, in their uh, population up to an 82% increase um, from uh, 33 uh, percent in 96 to 60% in 2006, which represented an 82% increase. Um, and uh, they also noted, as you can see in this slide, uh, that there was an increased incidence um, of autism diagnosis among people with multiple pregnancy relative to singleton pregnancy. However, um, uh, you can see um, in this uh, slide uh, and this table from their paper um, that while um, they reported a, uh, after all of their adjustments and their, they throw a lot of adjustments into their calculations, um, that while uh, they did show an increased uh, relative risk of uh, ICSI um, with autism, uh, there was not very much absolute increase in this diagnosis in, in spite of an 82% uh, increase in use of ICSI. So um, we reasoned that with all this, um, uh, that this didn't make very much sense. And we uh, criticized some factors um, in, in their analysis. Uh, for instance, um, uh, I mentioned before that discovery bias is something. Um, if uh, there have been other studies done uh, in California um, where they showed that um, diagnosis of autism was much more likely in higher affluent areas uh, and less uh, likely in, in, in less affluent areas. Um, it makes sense uh, that people who are less affluent probably can't afford to have their kids evaluated. Um, and so it's probably a, a, a bias in terms of diagnosis. Now, I, I think that these kinds of biases are very, very, very difficult to, to control for. Um, but we wrote a letter uh, criticizing um, these various biases uh, to the, um, uh, that, that, that they addressed. And um, they responded to our letter saying that, well, um, it's true that there's 82% use of ICSI and uh, um, uh, we, that would um, tend to cause a um, uh, increase in 14.4% uh, of autism among uh, singletons, um, but actually the increase in prevalence would only go up from 09 uh, to 1.03 uh, percent in terms of when you take into account that autism is a relatively uh, rare disease. So what they were um, writing this paper about was a potential uh, and undocumented um, and undocumentable increase of four tenths of one percent uh, in autism. Um, so and the other thing they said is that perhaps the increase in autism, an increase uh, ICSI utilization um, that might have led to a slight increase in autism prevalence, um, that uh, it was balanced by the, a, a decline in multiple birth because we were controlling how many uh, embryos that we were transferring. So they said that these two things uh, may have balanced each other out. Uh, so I think it's a bit of a tempest in a teapot. Um, uh, at the bottom line, um, the uh, use of ICSI may have been associated with a significant um, uh, increased relative risk of autism, but at best a very slight increase uh, in the absolute risk of autism. And um, I think that given that these were retrospective studies, um, using registry data, it's very hard to, to know whether there's an actual association or not. So. Um, I don't know about you, but I have not included uh, risks of, um, of autism among my conversations with patients considering ICSI. I think that overall the benefit of uh, increased um, chance of pregnancy is uh, outweighed um, by uh, any small, um, very small risk of, uh, of this kind of problem. And thank you for your attention.